Hello and welcome back to another episode of Into the 99, where we've got 99 cards, because Commander's number one. I am one of your host, Daniel. I am joined today with Slothy. Slothy, how's it going? Oh, it's going pretty well, thanks. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. I spent the morning doing garage sale stuff, which was a nice break from wedding planning stuff, so. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I love said, garage sales, yeah. I really liked that um, Ram... Yeah, my my weird you found. yeah my weird picture that I found yeah it's uh mm -hmm. it's some pretty cool stuff I found I found a lot of great stuff uh gross sales are are wonderful uh, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure everywhere does them so everyone I think knows what they are just people basically selling their garbage that they're throwing out yeah and I'm I'm a fan Only I uh, thrift stores I I like to hoard stuff but the uh it, it's a good lead into this week's commander because this is kind <laughs> of about throwing away and recycling some stuff too so. Uh, I'll, I'll let you take this one away and just, yeah, we'll jump right into this week's episode because I, I think it's a really cool commander. Sure. Yeah. Oh, and also, uh, yeah, we've got no Brian this week. Brian's Brian's busy helping family, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have fun with that, Brian. Yeah. So we got uh, Jan Jansen, Chaos Crafter, red, white, black for a 3 3 legendary gnome artificer with haste. Uh, you can tap him, sacrifice an artifact creature, and create two treasure tokens, or tap him, sacrifice a non-creature artifact, and create two 1-1 one, one construct artifact creature tokens. That's pretty cool. So, it's like just on its own, it's just kind of swapping back and forth, generating a bunch of value, but... Yeah, two treasures little... or two creatures. Yeah. I, I like that uh, they can sacrifice for each other, too. Yeah, so the first time, if you sack, like, if you sack a, or like a 1-1 a one, one Thopter, right? You get two treasures. Then, if you sack one of those treasures, you get two thopters. And if you sack, yeah, so it's like back and forth, really good, constantly yeah. gaining. Yeah, I thought this was a cool commander for a long time, and especially like it's such a like a forty nine cent kind of mark. Mm -hmm. Like it's pretty cool. Yeah, I honestly I completely forgot about this one until like two or three weeks ago, when I was looking through Twitter and I was like, "Oh wow, this is a card." Yeah, it's uh, it's a very like playable card, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so let's let's start. I assume with your artifacts. Sure. Uh, I'll take start. the first one. Yeah, we've got Arcane Signet, nice and easy, two mana, task for one mana of any color in the commander identity. Important for three colors. Yeah. Um. Then after that, we've got Bolas's Citadel, three triple black for a legendary artifact. You may look at the top card of your library any time. Uh, you may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than paying its mana cost. And you can tap it to sacrifice 10 non-land permanents and each opponent loses 10 life. I like that ability too. People don't really play it for that last one ever, but mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. Yeah, it's an awesome card. Yeah, it's also, it's also nice if you can... Because uh, it, it lets you play, right? So the ability to play mm -hmm. your lands at the top is also great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's a very cool one. We've also got some nice color fixing with our Boros Signet. Two mana, one and a tap. It is add one red, one white. Yeah. Um, after that, we've got Clock of Omens. Uh, four mana, tap two untapped artifacts you control, and untapped target artifact. That's a, such a cool combo enabling piece. Absolutely, yeah. That's That is the reason it's in this deck. Most clocks measure time, but a few measure everything. I like it. Yeah. Um, we had a talk about this actually yesterday while we were streaming Commander Sphere, and some of the people in our playgroup don't like it and think that it shouldn't be included. I love Commander Sphere as a card. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about it. It's a uh, great li early fixing. It's great end of the game throwaway for draw. I just I like the card. Yeah, exactly. And it works especially well with this commander, too, because you can sacrifice it to get two 1-1s. One yeah, that's true. This commander is about throwing the artifacts away, right? So mm -hmm. the utility. Uh, three mana. Tap, add one mana of your colors, commander's identity to it. Your pool. Sorry, can't talk today. And then sack it to draw a card. Yeah. Um, yeah, next up is a card that is in almost every single deck I make. Uh, Halo Fountain, two and a white. You can pay a white and tap it to untap a tapped creature you control. Create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. Uh, two white and tap it to untap two tapped creatures you control and draw a card. Uh, five white and tap it. Untap 15 tapped creatures you control and you win the game. 
that's really good, especially this is untapping the commander, which wants to keep tapping anyways. Yeah, so at, at its worst case, this is just doubling up where you're going to constantly recycle these back and forth. Yeah, exactly. Then, then you can also use it to turn it into a draw engine with your untapping and also a win con later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a win con throw. where you just yeah swing. I'll swing my 15 flying thopters or whatever he makes. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. Halo Fountain's such a cool card. Uh, we have your Liquid Meadow Coating. Two mana, target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types till the end of the turn. I love this card. Yeah. It's a great card. Well, seeing as how you love that card, do you want to take the next one as well? Yeah, the upgrade of it, which is also a mana rock, and I love this, the Liquid Metal Torque. The Took. Yeah. Uh, two mana. It taps for one colorless or tap target non-land permanent becomes an artifact in addition. Uh, the thing I like about the coding is you can turn people's lands into it, and I like to blow people's lands up because I'm a monster. But yeah, yeah. But the other one being able to still do the same thing as a mana rock, that's okay for non-land. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll I'll take the mana over blowing someone's land up. What? But unless unless it's like Wind Grace or something. That's fair. Um, yeah, next two, we've got the Orzhov Signet, Rakdos Signet, um, both cost two, pay one, Orzhov one, you can add a black and a white, and the Rakdos one, you can add a black and a red. I like that. I like the color fixing you've got. You've also got your sculpting steel. My favorite reprint, I think, of the year. I put this in everything, because I like it. It's so good. Three mana, you can have it enter as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield. Yeah. No complaints. Um, then we've got Sensei's Divining Top, uh, one mana. You can pay one, look at the top three cards of your library, put them back in any order, or you can tap it to draw a card, then put the top on top of its owner's library. Yeah, I like that. If you wanted, if you wanted to go silly with this one, you could always add like Aether Flux or something. But yeah, it's a good combo as well with the uh, Bolus. Yeah. You also have your Skull Clamp, which is if you're throwing cards away and making one ones as well. You, you can't not include something like this. One mana, equipped creature gets plus one, minus one. Whenever equipped creature dies, you draw two cards and equips for one. I love that. You turn one treasure yeah. token into being able to... You can either sack them for your treasures, like with your commander, or again, just turn it into a draw engine of pay one, draw two, and that's great. Yeah. Token generation for one ones in the command zone is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we've got our Soul Ring. One mana taps for two. We all know what that one does. Yep. I'll let you take the next one, too, because it's another great one. Sure. Uh, then after that, we've got the Staff of Domination. Three mana. You can pay one to untap it. Uh, two and tap it to gain a life. Three and tap it to untap target creature. Four and tap it to tap target creature. Or five and tap it to draw a card. Yeah. I like great that. Great in so many situations. It's uh, another infinite enabler if you have infinite mana generation, which I don't know mm-hmm. if you do. But you could pretty easy in an artifact theme deck throw in a Rings of Bright Hearth and uh, what's the Basalt Monolith? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, true. I want you to take the next one too because I've seen you putting it in more and more decks lately. I think it's a great card. Yeah, this is one of my favorite cards in a long while. It's Strixhaven Stadium, three mana. Uh, tap it for colorless and put a point counter on it. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, remove a point counter from Strixhaven Stadium. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, put a point counter on Strixhaven Stadium. Then if it has 10 or more point counters on it, remove them all, and that player loses the game. And it's also not whenever one or more. Does your commander make flyers or no? I keep not looking. Uh, no, no they're not flyers. Okay. But that's still okay if they're not flyers. Yeah. Because this isn't whenever the first one each turn. This is just whenever it does. Yeah. So making so many tokens, you can win pretty easy. Yeah, absolutely. And your commander's got haste, so really easy to come back from a from a wife with. Mm-hmm. You also have Umbral Mantle, which I love. Three mana. Equip creature has three and the untap. It gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn, and equip zero. So another great untapper for your commander. Yeah. Um, then we've got our Unwinding Clock. Four mana, untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. Yeah. Good way to 
get all your stuff back, get some more value out of your commander if you can use the uh, orc or coding. Yeah, I wish it was an artifact itself, hey? Mm -hmm. And then you finish your artifact section here with the Wishclaw Talisman, a card I love putting in because I love politics and games. Wishclaw Talisman yeah. is 1-1 one, one black, enters with three wish counters on it, pay one, tap, remove a wish counter from Wishclaw Talisman, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle, an opponent gains control of it, activate only during your turn. I really like that card. Yeah, yeah it's it's awesome. I, I always tell people I'll give it to them if they pass it back to me. <laughs> it's the only way to the only way to make the deal. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and, let's just knock out this planeswalker here. Okay. Um, we've got Duretti Scrap Savant, three and a red for a three mana legendary planeswalker Duretti. Uh, plus two, discard up to two cards, then draw that many. A minus two sacrifice an artifact. If you do return to an artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and minus ten you get an emblem with whenever an artifact is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. Yeah. And he can be your commander. That is a great emblem. I always forget how good mm -hmm. that is. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Again, throwing turning your commander's fear into just a turn every turn draw. Yeah. Beginning of the next end step, not even your next end step. Mm -hmm. So you can just constantly throw, again, that commander sphere away for draw every turn, draw four cards every go around. Yeah. I like that. Uh, anything in your lands card. you want to talk about before we go up? Just the normal artifacts? Um, yeah, just Vault of Whispers, Great Furnace, Ancient Den, uh, Bazooka Bog. Other than that, it's pretty basic. Yep. Okay, yeah. Um, now you want to do creatures or you want to do instants? What do you want to... What are you thinking? Let's jump into... Let's do instants. Okay. Let's save the creatures. Uh, we start off with a Chaos Warp. Two and a red. The owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card. If it's permanent, they put it on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah Chaos Warp's so good. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Corrupted Conviction. Uh, black as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, and draw two cards. Cool flavor text. <laughs> nice, Johnny. Yeah. For the good of all, those who stand against the harmony of Phyrexia must be cut down. Sheesh. You also have a deadly dispute, one in the black, as an additional cost to cast it, sack an artifact or treasure, and then draw two cards, create a treasure token. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we've got our generous gift, two and a white, destroy target permanent, as controller creates a 3-3 three, three green elephant creature token. It's really nice removal. Yeah. Then we have our path to exile, one white exile you target creature, its controller may search their library for basic land, they put on the battlefield tap, then they shuffle. Yeah. Uh, do you want to just take this next one too? Yeah, and we, and we ended up with a swords to plowshare, one white. Instant, you exile your target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. This is uh, a very light instant section for you. Yeah. I found that I've kind of been doing that more and more recently. Yeah, all gasoline. Let's go. It's so fun. <laughs> it, it It is. A, uh, I really liked playing that Wilson last night because of how it was. Yeah, Wilson was a really cool one. That deck was fun. The, uh, the stream we did last night, it's, those should be up next two weeks, and then we'll probably do a bunch from the face-to-face -face event kind of thing, which will be a, a yeah. great time. But, yeah, those were some really fun games. We experimented with a six-player commander game for our setup, just kind of, again, stress testing what we can mm -hmm. do camera-wise and setup-wise. Six people, I think, is a little too much for a game. I think it would be a little more fun with a four, but it still was fun. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I think the game still flowed pretty well. Yeah. All right, let's hit these sorceries here. Sure. Uh, first sorcery we got is Diabolic Intent, one in a black, as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. Again, it's already what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I really, really enjoy that you don't have to reveal it or anything. True. You have your gamble, one red, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, discard a card at random, then shuffle. I love it. When you've got nothing, you might as well trade it for something else. Yeah. It's a great Seems way to fitting. play, yeah. Uh, then we've got Reckless Handling, one in a red. Search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle, then discard a card at random. If an artifact card was discarded this way, 
uh, reckless handling deals two damage to each opponent. I haven't seen that. Basically, gamble 2.0. Yeah. Definitely, definitely solid. Yeah, this was one of the aftermath cards, I believe. Doesn't it doesn't even say search library for an artifact card revealed? Okay, so mm-hmm. not not as good, but still pretty cool. Yeah. And then we have White Sun's Twilight, a f- personal favorite of mine. <laughs> White Sun's Twilight is X double white. You gain X life. Create X one one colorless Phyrexian might artifact creature tokens with toxic one. They can't block, and if X is five or more, you destroy all other creatures. And that's great for alternate win con. It's great for more things to throw away to your commander. Yeah. I like this. Long live the mites. Yeah, right? I just might. <laughs> um. Yeah, jumping on into the enchantments here. We've got Agent of the Iron Throne, two and a black for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures I own have whenever an artifact or creature I control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. I expect that happens a lot. Yeah. Once or twice, yeah. Yeah, every once in a while. I love the backgrounds. I really hope that they keep making them. Absolutely, yeah. I honestly, I kind of like that more than I like Partner. Yeah, it's nice to have the enchantment, and there's so many cool pairings. I like, like we just said with the Wilson. You got to play Wilson mm-hmm. with the Raised by Giants, and that Wilson was dumb yeah. and thick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think they brought something really unique to it instead of just partner, right? Because partners, mm-hmm. it's already so vast what you can pair with. Yeah, exactly. So Especially was... after uh, like Commander Legends, the first one. It was just the silly Commander set that's coming up. I think has new cards too, right? Yeah, I think so. Like, it's not just going to be the one... Like, it's not just reprints. I think new cards are coming, too. So, we'll probably see more partner. Yeah. I'm hoping we see a Sakashima reprint. That really needs one with a partner. It's never in stock anywhere. Yeah. Probably because I keep putting them in decks. (laughs) I like to have two of my commander. Uh, We also have our impact tremors. One in a red. Whenever a creature enters under your control, one damage to each opponent. Yeah, you're making a lot of creatures every turn. Uh, then we've got our Phyrexian Arena, one double black. Beginning of your upkeep, draw a card and lose a life. I like this. Your next one, too, I really like the alternate win con here. Revel and mm-hmm. Riches, anything tre- generating treasure has to. Four and a black. Yeah. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with sack. Add one mana of any color to your pool. The beginning of your upkeep, if you control ten or more treasures, you win the game. It is very easy to get 10 treasures in this deck. I could imagine, yep. <laughs> um, next up, we've got Skrelv's Hive, one and a white. At the beginning of your upkeep, lose one life and create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might uh, with Toxic 1, and this creature can't block. And as long as an opponent has three or more poison counters, creatures I control have or with Toxic have lifelink. Skrelv's has such a cool card. Mm-hmm. Skrelv is one of my favorite characters. I think it's so cool, yeah. Because he's... So cool. You also have your Smothering Tithe, more treasure generation, three and a white. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they may pay two. I never do and never will. If the player doesn't, you create a treasure token. Everything I put into decks is draw. I can't I can't afford this. <laughs> draw is too rich for my blood to pay. Fair enough. Um, and our last uh, enchantment here is Tempered Steel, one double white. Artifact creatures I control get plus two, plus two. Yeah, that's almost a must-have. Yeah. Death shall prevail as long as our will fail, uh, falls to rust. May necessity anneal our resolve. Gone to the Shaper. Very cool. That is a lot of words that I don't understand. Ah, right? I like <laughs> it a lot. I think it's cool. That's uh, yeah. another old card. I think it's been reprinted a few times recently, but definitely an old one, and it's fun to see how much use you can get out of it lately. Yeah. Yeah, that version that I've got in the deck right now was Brothers War Commander. Yeah, fair. But it it was from back in the before times. Yeah, the ancient. <laughs> uh now we're on to our creatures here. Yeah. You got a thick creature list and it's not very expensive, so I'm interested to see that. Yeah. Um you wanna start us off here? Yes. Um I was also gonna say I'm shocked you don't have an annoyed procession in there. Or are you building like me where just one wasn't in front of you? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, anointed procession would be a great one for that. Just uh, 
sack one of your creatures, make four treasures. Sack one treasure, make four creatures. That'd be gross. <laughs> that that card desperately needs to be reprinted. Absolutely. Uh, back to your Academy Manufacturer again, which is also a problem with that card, the doubling. That's why I started talking about it. Three mana for a 1-3 assembly worker artifact creature. If you would create a clue, food, or treasure, instead create one of each, which is great. Yeah. I think that's going to really go up, especially with all the food stuff we've been seeing spoiled from the hobbits already. Mm -hmm. A lot of... There's uh, two hobbits that have both... Both are mono green and they generate food tokens in their own way. I'm playing those as partner. I don't care what anyone says. Mm -hmm. That is one of them's Peregrine Took, I think. Maybe? Let me see what they are. Just two quick moments here. Yeah. Do, I am do, very excited do, to build do, do. Um, Hobbit Tribal. Hobbit Tribal will be cool. There is... I'm just trying to find it here. Sorry for everyone watching the video that I'm not going to edit my search out. Uh, one is Meridoc Brandy Buck. And the other is Peregrine Took, yes. Yeah, those are those definitely I'm just gonna play as if they have partner and I, yeah. I can't be stopped. <laughs> um yeah, jumping back in here, we've got bronze guardian, four and a white, artifact creature golem, uh star five, double strike and ward two. Other artifacts I control have ward two, and bronze guardian's power is equal to the number of artifacts I control. Can't stand this card. Brian plays it too much, it's too good. <laughs> Everything getting Ward 2 is nuts. Yeah. Ward's... And I know I know we've mentioned it so many times. Ward's a phenomenal mechanic. Yeah. One, of, so one of Wilson's many, many, many mechanics printed on that card. If only there was haste. Wilson just has everything printed on that card. I think it's the mm -hmm. best stats for any 2-2 two -two in the game. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. We should do more Wilson decks. Yeah. Did we ever do my Wilson decks? I have five of them. I don't actually think we did. We should do a five-hour episode on Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fun. Uh, you also have your dig site engineer, two and a white. Whenever you cast an artifact, you can pay two. If you do, you create a zero-zero colorless construct artifact creature token with. This creature gets one-one for each artifact you control. That's a problem. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. That's a big problem. Those construct tokens get out of control. If uh, for anyone who's played against Urza, if Urza doesn't beat you with the annoying stacks cards that's inherited in Urza, then the construct is usually a giant. Yeah. This next one was the one I was waiting for. Please take it away. Uh yeah. Next up, we've got Disciple of the Vault. Um, one black for a one-one human cleric. Whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may have target opponent lose one life. Such an easy way to hold the table hostage once you have so many treasures. You drop this down for one, and okay, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll sack 20 treasures. Yeah. Yeah, Disciple of the Vault puts in <laughs> pretty disgusting work in every kind of deck that it's included in. Mm -hmm. It's also like a must kill. It can't just stand around, but that yeah, no, artifact yeah. stuff being a mana ability is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's artifact Disciple <laughs> of the Vault, especially because you, you're... Your commander is essentially a token doubler on its own. It's turning one into mm -hmm. two all the time. Yeah. And yeah, that's a problem when a bunch of those are, your commander's already sacrificing them, turning them into things that can be sacrificed. That sucks. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, in, in response to your path to exile, I'll kill you. True, yeah. Cyclonic rift. Cyclonic death. <laughs> You also have your Dockside Chef, one black, one, uh, then it has an ability, one of the black, oh, it's one, two, human citizen enchantment creature. A lot of words on that. One of the black, sack an artifact or a creature draw card. Great use yeah. for them, again. Yeah. Um, next up, we've got Draw Scorpion. Uh, four mana for a 3-1 artifact creature. No subtype. Whenever draw a scorpion or another artifact creature is put into a graveyard from play, you may untap target artifact. That's very cool, especially with your halo fountain. Mm -hmm. Sack one yeah. halo fountain. Sack one halo fountain. I like that a lot. That's really cool. Yeah. You have your Ellis Ill Core uh, Sadistic Pilgrim. Again, I can't talk today. One in the black for a 2-2 two -two Phyrexian or Cleric with Death Touch. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. Phenomenal. And whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life again. Phenomenal for when you're already doing it. Yeah. 
Uh, then we've got our Foundry Inspector. Three mana for a 3-2 artifact creature construct. Artifact spells I cast cost one less. Yeah. That's a great card, too. Yes. Uh, a must-have in, in a lot of artifact decks. Is this, this is the new one, right? This next card here? Yeah, you take this one away here quick. Sure. Uh, we've got Hedron Detonator. Two in a red for a 2-3 Goblin Artificer. Whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under my control, it uh, deals one damage to target opponent. And you can tap to sacrifice two artifacts. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. That's I like really being cool. Able to, I like being able to ping on enter and exit. Yeah, right? This is uh, also the ability to dig for your cards. Mm-hmm. You're not really going to miss land drops. Yeah, exactly. Your next one, I you you have a lot of alternative win cons in this. I really like that. Thank you. We have our Hellkite Tyrant. Four double red for a 6-5 dragon. It's got Flying Trample. Pretty good stats. When it deals combat damage to a player, gain control of all artifacts they control. I don't like that. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 20 more artifacts, you win. Our Howling Mine. Yeah, true. It is our howling mine. I'm I'm back on board. <laughs> oh, taking Brian Soul Ring last night, so good. If you guys don't check the videos out on YouTube, you're really missing a lot of a lot of great salt in Brian's in Brian's heart. Oh yeah. When I target his Soul Rings in games, it's it's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, it was he he just dropped when you did that. Oh, his face was his face was good. It's um, uh he's got no beard now, so it's uh it's so expressive. Yeah. He looks like it looks like way younger. Little baby Brian, yeah. I'll um, let you take this next one, yeah. Yeah. Next up, we've got Ingenious Artillerist, two and a red for a three-one human artificer. Whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under my control, uh, Ingenious Artillerist deals that much damage to each opponent. Yeah, I like that. This is a great common. The fact that that's when it enters too, which is great. Because mm -hmm. yeah, every turn three opponents out every turn you're d like dishing out what's that At six least. damage yeah yeah six damage just to play your commander how it's gonna play yeah uh we've got joy joy <clears throat> can't talk today joy was familiar four mana for a two two bird artifact and historic spells you cast are one less Uh, yeah, both of us are over here dying. I uh, yeah. Before I started coughing there, for anyone watching the video, uh, I was gonna say I one time I, I can't remember what the creator was, but they called it Jay Hoyras, and it just has made me happy every time ever. So I always J Hoyras. Yeah, whenever I'm playing, I always say J Hoyra. Yeah, it's That's uh, awesome. It's a great way. It's uh, it was an interesting pronunciation. J Hoyra. <laughs> That's, that, awesome. that's probably why I started choking because my brain was so used to saying <laughs> Jehoira. <laughs> um, yeah, next up we've got uh, Bovilitha Forge Master. Five mana for a 3 5 artifact creature construct. Uh, tap it to sacrifice three artifacts, search your library for an artifact card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. I will uh, absolutely sacrifice three 1 1s to go get out my uh, Bolas of Citadel for free. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a real problem. There's a lot of really good artifacts in here, especially yeah. that you don't care about, like even just throwing away, again, three treasure tokens to fetch out your your foundry inspector, even your academy manufacturer. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's gross. You also have your loyal apprentice for more token generation. One in red for a 2-1 human artificer with haste. It has lieutenant. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you control your commander, you create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying, and that token gains haste. Yeah. Again, another great way to get through for that uh, Strixhaven Stadium one with the flying Thopters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking with it. Um, and yeah, next up we've got Magda, Brazen Outlaw, 1 and a red for a 2-1 legendary Dwarf Berserker. Other dwarves I control get plus 1, plus 0. Whenever a dwarf I've uh, I control becomes tapped to create a treasure token, sacrifice five treasures, search your library for an artifact or dragon card, put that card on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Artifact it, or dragon is great. There is exactly one dragon in this Yeah, deck. well, your dragon's your win con, which is a problem. Yeah. And you can grab that uh, really out of the blue 
if you're sitting there with a bunch of artifacts, you can right before your turn starts go and five man or five treasures, go grab Hellkite Tyrant, win on upkeep. Yeah. Yeah, Magda definitely brings a big threat with that. Yeah, like the Magda um, with Clock of Omens and Liquid Metal Coating. Oh, yeah, I guess you can also make your infinite. Infinite uh, taps treasure tokens. So as soon as you get your dragon out, you can just win right away. That's very cool. Oh, yeah, because this also lets you sacrifice five treasures. It doesn't matter if they're tapped or not. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Very cool combo. Yeah. This is another one that I've wanted to build for a while. As just annoying yeah. board white tribal. <laughs> Mahadi Emporium Master. One, one black, one red. It's just very cool artwork, very cool creature type, and a very cool effect. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of a Khajiit. Yeah, right? This is a legendary creature, Cat Devil. 3-3. Three, three. At the beginning of your end step, create a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. This is just be toxic tribal. I love it. You know yeah. what I mean? I just I just constantly go off and kill everyone's creatures, just all removal. <laughs> I make a deck that nobody's uh -huh. no one would see that coming. It's all interaction. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle, that, yeah. That that would throw things off. Yeah, no one ever, no one would know. I might make them a hottie deck for sure, with just only <laughs> instants and sorceries that are like board wipes. No creatures, nothing but treasure. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly write that down. You take the next one yeah. here. I, I have a deck idea already brewing in my head for this. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, next up we've got Marionette Master, four double black for a one three human artificer with fabricate three. Uh, so when it enters the battlefield, put three plus and plus one counters on it, or create three one one colorless servo artifact creature tokens. Uh, whenever an artifact I control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Marionette Master's power. Yeah, it's also a super problematic card. Yeah which you can't leave on the battlefield in a deck that's focused around sacrificing artifacts. I mean, I, I'd i say you can leave it around. Mm, can you? Can you leave it around? I don't think so. Yeah. Whoops. I was going to say, oh, your next one is also very cool. Your Mayhem Devil. One, one black, one red. For a 3-3 three, three Devil, whenever a player sacks a permanent, it deals one damage to any target. Yeah. That sucks if I'm sacking treasures. That sucks if you're sacking treasures. It just hurts all around. Mayhem Devil just hurts. It's mean. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I really like that card. Zach, from a long time ago, got me pretty badly with this one in his one of his decks. Uh, Negan. His Negan deck. Oh, yeah. That Mayhem Devil put in work and decimated me. Broke my nice. heart. <laughs> Um, but yeah, next up we've got our Mirror Retriever, two mana for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature mirror. When it dies, return another target artifact card from my graveyard to my hand. To me, I would just use this to get back my Halo Fountain. That to me would be the most Absolutely. important card, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Right? Uh, you have Nadir's Nightblade, two and a black, an Elf Warrior, one, three, and a great inclusion for this, yeah. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Again, also... Sack 20 treasures, gain 20 life to save yourself and yeah. kill the table, possibly. Yeah, not a bad trade. Yeah, that's a, a very underplayed card, too, for how many tokens are in mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with every deck that runs all the pitiless plunderers. Like, you're already making the treasures. Why not have this, too? Yeah. Yeah, next up we've got our Ornithopter of Paradise. Two mana for a 0-2 artifact creature Thopter with flying, and you can tap it for one mana of any color. Yeah, I love Ornithopter of Paradise. Yeah. The next card, I think, is still possibly one of the best out-of-the-box pre-cons. Absolutely, I agree. Osgear Unedited is it's just a phenomenal deck alone. Uh, we have mm -hmm. Osgear the Reconstructed, Reconstructor. Two, one red, one white for a giant Artificer 4-4. Four, four. Has Vigilance, has Pay 1, Sack an Artifact, Target Creature Control gets plus 2, plus 0 till end of turn. No one cares about that, no one ever does it. Yeah, pretty what, much. Yeah, what, what you're using is Pay X, uh, tap it, exile an artifact with mana value X from your graveyard, create two tokens that are copied of it, activate only a sorcery. 
I will have two soul rings. Thank you. If Ozgear's last line of text didn't exist, I think that this would just be like a tier one commander for like fun, like for for being able to actually respond to cool things and bring in your meteor golems like instant speed to blow things up any of those things it would be so yeah. cool i really hate that they stapled activate only as a sorcery onto it yeah yeah it, i agree it's uh it's very cool i understand why it's a very strong ability but mm -hmm. it's just such a bummer because the yeah. card could have been so much more especially because basically Osgear is also drawn almost like a 40k like battle templar yeah yeah Osgear is it's just such a cool looking card with such a cool effect and the only thing that i think holds it back from being truly great is that last line of text yeah the last you line of text take, breaks my heart you just gotta take like a sharpie or something just cross it out i would be i would be fine with with just retconning it entirely to being playable that way yeah yeah i would be okay with it i think it'd be a very cool deck absolutely um, next one we've got here is Oswald Fiddlebender. One in a white for a 2 2 legendary gnome artificer with magical tinkering. Uh, you can pay a white and tap Oswald to sacrifice an artifact. Search your library for an artifact card with mana value equal to one plus the sacrificed artifact's mana value. Uh, put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle. Activate only as a sorcery. Again, activate only as a sorcery, which is a giant bummer. Yeah. This card also, by the way, has, I think, which is possibly very offensive, the worst secondary art I've ever seen, if not one of them. You seen the other art of it? I uh, it was on a list at LGS, and they gave me the other one, and I took it back. It's the first time I've returned a card. Um, oh, like the um, the sketch art one. Oh, it looks horrendous. Let's see here. Looks kind of like Wolverine. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. No, it's, it's weird. Yeah, it's not for me. I don't. I don't know mm. if I feel how I feel about that one. I just don't like it. Yeah. Looking at it big like this, it's not as bad as looking at it on the card, so. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, but the other one just looks so cool. Yeah. I hate that card's art. Yeah, this is one of the few that I think the original art is better. The sketch the, art's uh, on a lot the of them are art. really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just so cool on the ship, yeah. Uh, we also have our Reckless Fireweaver, one in red for a 1-3 human artificer. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control... One damage to each opponent. So again, another six mana or six damage per turn with your commander just for doing what your commander's doing. Yeah. I don't mind that at all. I also don't mind that at all. Um, next up then we've got Ruthless Technomancer. Three and a black for a two four human wizard. When Ruthless Technomancer enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature you control. If you do, create a number of treasure tokens equal to that creature's power. And you can pay two and a black to sacrifice X artifacts. Return target creature card with power X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and X can't be zero. I like that one. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I really, really liked Neon Dynasty. I like so far what I was going to say with this deck. I know we're kind of getting close to the end of this list here. Mm -hmm. I really like that your backup plans have backup plans, and this is your Batman deck. <laughs> yeah. You know? All right, you killed my tyrant for sure, but I'm bringing it back with this at instant speed, right? You've got mm -hmm. so much artifact generation that a lot of these things just bring them back. You've got multiple alternate win cons. I really like how this deck's put together. It seems like it'd be a really fun time to play. I personally mm -hmm. would never win with this deck. because I would be trying to see how many creatures I can make. I would just dirtle until I was done untapping everything, and that would never work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. But in my heart, I would have a great time. That's that's the point of Commander anyway. Exactly. Having fun with your friends. Uh, you want this next one um, here? Sure. Yeah, next up, we've got Scrap Trawler. Three mana for a 3-2 artifact creature construct. Whenever it or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand, target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser mana value. Again, a nice way to filter through. Yeah. Then we have our Shimmer Mirror. Give every artifact you've got flash. Three mana for a 2-2 mirror with flash, and you can cast artifacts as though they had flash. Yeah. It's also a really cool flavor text when you take a look at it. It evades Phyrexians by hiding in the spaces between seconds. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's really cool flavor. I really like, 
I, I say it so often, but I love when we get to do these deck techs and we look at cards up close like this because mm -hmm. you never see them. Like when you're holding a card like this in your hand, right? It's just a, it's just a nice little thing. But when, yeah. you, when you've got it up close and personal mm -hmm. like this on the screen blown up, I think you really, truly appreciate a lot of the artwork. And again, a lot of the flavor text is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, we also, do you want to take this one too? Uh, no, you can take this one. Uh, we've also got Zorn. It's two and a red, three, two elemental. If you create one or more treasures, instead create those tokens plus an additional. That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, every time you sack one of your one, one creatures, you just throw it away for three treasures. That's awesome. Three treasures on a tap. Yeah. Um. And yeah, our final creature here is Zulaport Cutthroat. One in a black for a 1 1 human rogue ally. Whenever it or another creature I control dies, each opponent loses a life and I gain a life. Yeah, I got no problem yeah. with that one. Yeah. I think this is, um, uh, like I said, we, we really ripped through this deck pretty fast, but I think this was a very fun deck. It's not, it's not crazy expensive, like 250 ish bucks. Yeah, two hundred and fifty, and you can definitely some some can like, be trimmed down. Like your your artifact section's seventy four, and I think that's basically the only expensive. Your creatures mm -hmm. are only fifty. Your enchantments are only fifty. Yeah, I think a bunch of it's the revel and riches. I think to be honest, mm -hmm. a bunch of your higher cost stuff is just win cons. Just take one of your three alternate win cons out. You know. Yeah. Yeah, right. Smothering Tide is $33. That needs to come down, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, even it's if a... you just want to take out the uh, Tyrant, that's 15 right there. Yeah, it's it's definitely a very playable deck just in its normal format. None mm -hmm. of your sections are overwhelming. It's such a cool, like I said, I haven't seen anyone play this one, but I keep seeing it, and it keeps looking really, really fun to play against and sit there mm -hmm. and dirtle back and forth. I put one in my Brea deck. Oh yeah, and that's that's where I've played with it, and it's it's pretty great to do that. But I, I just think it'd be fun to build on its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely, I've fallen in love with this commander. It does things very quickly. Like there's, um, I mentioned the the Magda combo, but there are two more if you don't mind. Oh yeah, please take them away. Um, well, kind of one more, but it just liquid metal coating or torque. Um, but yeah, if you've got Jan Jansen, uh, Clock of Omens, and either Coding or Torque, um, you can create infinite tapped creature tokens and treasure tokens with infinite, enter the battlefield, leave the battlefield, death triggers, and sacrifice triggers. How do you, how do you do it? Like, what does it do? Like, um, how's the combo run? So you would activate the, either the Coding or the Torque, um, turning Jan Jansen into an artifact creature, uh, activating... Jen's first ability, uh, tap it, sacrifice a creature. Um, then you tap the two treasures to activate the Clock of Omens, untapping Jan Jansen, and then you can just go so on. So you, you untap Jan many... Jansen, you throw away, uh, again, you you tap it the first, you throw an artifact, you get two tokens. Mm -hmm. You tap those two uh, treasure tokens. The treasure tokens are still sitting there just tapped from Clock of Omens. Mm -hmm. Untap Jan throw one of them away for two creatures, tap those two creatures with the clock, and just back and forth? Yeah. That's really cool. So, yeah, you can yeah. make infinite tapped creatures and tap treasures. Yeah. So any of, your, any of your drain things work. So you've got your Magda ability to do the same thing. Very combo heavy. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to kind of make it a little bit more on the threatening end where it felt like it's something that you've kind of got to deal with yeah or else it's just going to kind of win out of nowhere clock of omens is a, is a card that generally has a purpose you know mm -hmm. it's also yeah, cool I... to see treasure tokens be used in combos that way where you can you're you're tapping them and not tossing them away that's what i liked about galazeth so much right yeah yeah it's it's such a fun deck from what i've done so far i'm hoping to have it all together in paper before we go to edmonton because that's one that i want to bring that'd be a fun one to play for sure 
I think I'm probably just going to honestly bring only group hug decks. I just like to play group hug things. <laughs> Although you've seen how some of my group hug goes. I have, yeah. Some Sometimes yeah. I hug a little too hard, you know? I Yeah, this yeah. is... Uh, I, I think it'll be really fun for anyone. Yeah, like we're getting close to the end of our episode here. For anyone who's coming out to the face to face, that's a big like magic festival in Canada kind of thing. We're doing. We'll be at the Edmonton one as the. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we've been a guest out at one, so that's going to be a great time as well. Come out and play. We're hoping to meet a bunch of new people there. I'm going to play just commander the whole time. I'm actually taking time off work, and I never take any time off work, so that'll be fun too. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Brian and I are gonna do the uh, pre-con tournament. Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna be doing pre-cons you, too. You're doing and, it too. Oh yeah, for nice. sure. I'll be I'll be playing pre-cons. I'm bringing out a bunch of arch enemy cards and plane chase mm -hmm. cards, so we can play a bunch of stuff. We're gonna be filming a bunch there, streaming. So hopefully, we get to meet a bunch of people, play with a bunch of people. There's lots of other cool creators out there, which are gonna be fun to play some games with as well. So mm -hmm. this it should Absolutely. be a great time, and yeah, this would be a fun deck to to showcase out there because again it's not common right i don't think jan jansen's a very frequently played commander um let's take a look real quick jan jansen he is he has just over three thousand decks which is ranked 243 on edh rec so not huge no not very popular at all especially since it's been out for coming up on a year yeah right yeah yeah no yeah, i think I, I think it should be a, a cool commander to to see played i mm -hmm. i don't know i think it'll be fun yeah absolutely i don't know what i'm gonna bring out because i've got too many decks so deciding usually usually i host games at my house and i can just go to my wall of decks and be like i'm gonna play blah 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 you just gotta bring them all bring them all yeah <laughs> I start showing up in a golf cart just driving through the event. Okay. <laughs> Make, making trips in the cart. Yeah, making trips oh. in the cart with like a wagon behind it. Yeah, I got a lot of decks. <laughs> I'm probably going to bring Parnese because I think Parnese is really mm. interesting. The one that does the uh, they can copy spells. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Grixis Group Hug is a very odd one, but we get there. Does it have a Howling Man? Yeah. Oh, it does. Of course. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, I'll stop ranting about that, but it should be a really fun time. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I like this deck. Did you say there was one more combo before we head out to that one? Or uh, was it... I I did, but it's just instead of liquid metal co coating, it's liquid metal. Coating. Okay, yeah. So uh, so same, same, same combo. steps and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I like that. Yeah, no, I I really like this deck. I'm happy to to wrap it there. We've got a nice fast one. We had such a busy weekend for everyone. Mm -hmm. I, again, before I get to my end music, thank that we're we just been so busy just doing uh, wedding stuff and getting ready for all that, a lot of summer stuff. We've got lots of cool stuff that we're going to be doing after we're done all the wedding, but this is mm -hmm. taking up my time. We'll say that. <laughs> so, yeah, for everyone who doesn't know, I'm getting married pretty soon, and it'll be a great time. So thanks, mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah, now, now I'll hit my music. Uh, thank you, everyone, for getting to the end of the episode and just for being here with us every week. It's fun to talk magic with our buddies and play magic. It's really great to do that. Uh, if you like, share, subscribe, that really does help people find our content and see what we've been doing. If you want to go above and beyond that, we've got a Patreon, uh, Discord benefits with it. It's a really fun place to play and talk. We have a lot of patron streams that we're going to be doing and a lot of cool guests for those as well that I've been working on setting up. So it should be a lot of fun. I think we're going to do another tournament as well on it. I just have to figure out prizing. Brian, Brian really loves hosting the tournaments, so that was a good time as well. Yeah, if you want to see more of our content, into the 99com We've got lots of really cool artifacts that are written by, like I write artifacts, some of the community members write artifacts. Lots of fun artifacts. stuff there. Huh? Did I say artifacts? You write art you I write artifacts. articles. I write artifacts. They'll, they'll be discovered <laughs> one day. No, um, then there's also, <laughs> that's too funny. Uh, we also do a lot of live streams and stuff, so it's been really, really fun producing these games. Uh, we've got a producer that comes out yesterday. Like I said, we were stress testing the cameras with a six-person setup, so some real chaotic Commander games, but yeah, yeah uh, a lot of really fun. It's nice to get back out there. Yeah, exactly. Come come for one of the four-man four games again soon. Yeah, open to. Yeah, and again, that's, uh, that's basically where I wanted to end it. Everyone, thank you so much for listening and showing up again at the end of the week, and yeah, hopefully we will yeah. catch you next week. Yeah, see you later. Bye-bye.